This video is sponsored by Hello Mood. By the time you've clicked on this video, you know that today is a little bit different than usual. We're doing a bug taste test. Why? Well, I purchased a variety of creatures to consume on camera. How did we get here? I'll get to that in a second. Let me first start off by showing you what I purchased. It's kind of like a tiers thing. Okay, first tier, mixed bugs, a variety of smaller creatures. Second tier, big crickets, not regular crickets, big ones. And the third tier, a black scorpion. <sighs> so, um... <laughs> Before we go any further, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Hello Mood. Mood delivers high quality Delta 8 THC products that are categorized by the mood each of the strains will create. From social, to creative, to focus, to energize, and chill and more. Delta-8 THC is a natural compound found in the hemp plant, similar to its cousin, Delta-9, found in marijuana, but extracted from these federally legal hemp plants, making Mood's products 100% legal. So, easy delivery. And if you've ever gotten paranoid from weed like I have, Delta-8 might work for you here too. Most users report a feeling of being clear-headed, or joyous, or fun. And from my own experience, it's pretty relaxing. I'm a big fan of the chill and the Energized. So go check out their website because they have tons of products to choose from, like edibles, flowers, tinctures, and more. All categorized based off the mood you're looking for. You can use the coupon code LINDSAYGUMMY in the video description to get your own free pack of gummies to test out the mood high. And if anything else catches your eye, check out my 20% off coupon in the description as well. Thank you, Mood, for sponsoring this video. And be sure to check out all the products they offer on their website using the link in the video description. Now, back to the books. <laughs> Ugh. And now I'm gonna eat some fucking bugs. All right. So I know I definitely need to explain myself. As we had previously discussed from the community post, my next video was supposed to be how snakes lost their limbs, snake evolution, telling you about the variety of snakes that exist. But it turns out that I needed a bit more time to do research on it, and I'm still working on it right now. And so Friday of last week, I was trying to figure out what I was gonna do in the meantime, what I could possibly provide for you while I continued research on snake evolution. I know I didn't need to do anything, but for some reason, I decided that it would be a good idea to purchase bugs on the internet to eat. And this isn't the first time I've eaten bugs. So it wasn't really a difficult decision to make. It was more of a difficult decision to process after the fact. As you probably saw, I uploaded a short video trying reheated Mopane worms that my dad gave me. I'm reheating caterpillars. I don't know about that. That was a warm up for you. And maybe for me too, because these are <clears throat> not really seasoned. What did they do here? There's salt, they got salt on it. I have created a little workstation. I have plates for each bag, limes, and more salt. So I guess um, I guess I should just do it now. We're gonna be going in tiers, kind of like hot ones with the hot sauce, but instead it's increasingly heinous bags of trail mix. We're gonna start off with the mixed bugs, which includes dehydrated grasshoppers, mole crickets, silkworms, field crickets, I'm having a really hard time. That one has really big claws. <laughs> I also want to point out that not everything on this table is technically a bug. Just like the crabs that we talked about a few weeks ago, there are true bugs as well. I believe they're within the class Insecta, but I have never needed to know that information since I learned it in college, so it has completely escaped me. And that's fine. Let's just fucking do it. A bag inside of a bag. It smells like lizard food. Okay, yeah, that's one thing that I didn't do in the Mopane worm video is tell you really anything about the texture or taste or anything, so I'm gonna be sure to give you a full breakdown of everything that I'm experiencing. So, starting off, it smells like lizard food. I'm not gonna be eating all of it because my dad asked me for the leftovers. He's gonna bring them to his friends for a little get together they're having as a going away party for their friend who's going on a five month hiking trip and he'll give them the rest because bugs are a great source of protein. Good to have on a five month hiking trip, I guess. Okay, I'm doing this. Salt them. <laughs> I don't even know which one is wit. Oh, let me, let me give you a close up. They just look like mush. So I guess I gotta try each one that looks like a different species, kind of like different colored gummy bears. Grasshopper. I'm gonna guess this is the grasshopper. Okay. <clears throat> um, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> it tastes smoky. It tastes smoky. God, what is it fucking? It tastes like if you put a bug in your mouth. Sometimes my genius is, it's almost frightening. There's really no texture to describe it with. So here's a, here's a worm. This is what the worm looks like. Focus, focus. God damn it. Worm. I actually fuck with that one. That one's better. Oh, never mind. Okay. 
Okay, so this one, <coughs> this one tastes good until it hits your taste buds. This one is good on your teeth and then it hits your taste buds and it's very bad. Kind of tastes like what you would expect crunchy dirt to taste like. I really don't want to touch the, ugh. What's this one? I have no idea what this is. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Before I do the third one, I, I feel like I need to explain myself a little bit more. I've been planning on doing a bug taste test for a long time before I even started YouTube. My initial plan was to get a panel of my friends to do it with me and turn it into a little game show, like a little competition. And so when I decided to do this on Friday, I thought, what if I could round up a little last minute group of my friends who would be willing to do this? None of them were willing to do this. So I decided to do it by myself. And here we are um, in my room with a makeshift desk and dinner table, um, doing this by myself. Oh, the wings just really slid off. Can you see it? This little creature. I don't know what it is. They all taste the same. It's all the same experience. This is just horrific. God, what is that flavor? I need water. This is a disaster. All right, moving on to big crickets. Let me show you again, big crickets. I've eaten regular crickets before, but not big crickets. In my senior year of high school, my AP human geography teacher took us to this restaurant in Santa Monica called Taboo that had a variety of strange specimens on the menu and we just tried them all. Um, we tried crickets, frog legs, catfish, which I know isn't really taboo, but it was definitely served in a very taboo way. It was just sitting there on a plate. That was, I couldn't, that, that was too much for me. And I actually liked the crickets. They tasted like popcorn to me, the way they seasoned them. It, it wasn't that bad. And so I figured that I would, um, try with the big crickets, but, um, as we know, they're only salted. So I'm really just, I'm really experiencing the flavor mother nature gave them, which is a terrible one. Once again, smells like lizard food. These aren't big crickets. These are regular sized crickets. I've eaten these crickets before. All right, this is gonna be easy. <laughs> I'm gonna put some of them back and squeeze a little bit of lime. Bon appetit. I'll just, I think I'm just gonna do all these in one go. <laughs> Why did I do this? Oh, 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 the lime makes it worse. Oh my God. Oh, these aren't the same. Oh, that's horrific. That is heinous. Flavor there is um, more like burnt barbecue. After the barbecue came out of a landslide covered in trash and mud and dirt from 300 million years ago. That's what that tastes like. And now we have one more left. Now we have the black scorpion, which I've spoken about scorpions a few different times throughout my content creation experience. It's always been about the deadliest kinds of scorpions. Apart from that, I don't know much about scorpions. I'm not a big fan of arachnids, as we know from the spider in my room, which by the way, I haven't seen since the last update. And on a completely unrelated note, I'm moving and the spider's not coming with me if it's still alive. I'm moving out of my house, I'm, I'm moving. You know, there was a lot more that I was going to say during this video. I had a lot planned out in my head that I was going to say, and then we got here and it all just came crashing down because this is not a good experience. I'm not having fun and that's okay. I just kind of feel like I'm talking out of my ass now. I'm not ready for this. Wait, okay. I'm not ready for the scorpion. I don't like arachnids. Here's the thing. So I've had a couple different experiences with scorpions in my time in different countries. I've never come across one here. The first time was in Costa Rica. I found one underneath my bed. Well, actually underneath the nightstand next to my bed as I was leaving a hotel room. It was a big scorpion kind of waddling back and forth. And so I didn't really know what to do. It was actually my first time seeing a scorpion in the flesh. So we called management to come take it out because we didn't want to smush it. We just wanted to take it out, release it, but we didn't want to touch it. And management came and they were like, all right, we're going to take care of this, blah, blah, blah. And they just stopped it. <laughs> and I have this video. I was going to watch the guy. I have a video ready for the guy to pick it up in a container and take it outside. And instead it's a video of the scorpion getting stopped. That's my first experience with scorpions. The second is of course, when I was in Namibia, because I was living out in the middle of nowhere, scorpions were a very present danger along with black mambas and other creatures of that nature. And so I had to check my boots for scorpions every morning. That in itself was traumatizing enough. The other traumatizing moment was the sound in the middle of the night of a grown man screaming bloody murder after he got stung by a scorpion while folding his clothes. Understandable. Have a great day. <laughs> I never came across a scorpion in my own room, but I did come across a baboon spider, which is what they call tarantulas there. <sighs> I went to go do laundry. Since I didn't have a lot of storage space, I left my laundry bag underneath my bed. And so I went to grab it 
and a tarantula was underneath it. No! And uh, I just froze. Because the thing is, you can go to school for zoology. You can graduate with a degree in zoology. That doesn't mean that it's gonna get rid of your phobia of arachnids, which I've realized I definitely have, which is why I'm stalling so much because I don't wanna take it out of this bag. Everything that I've learned about arachnids has been against my will in college. I didn't wanna learn about them, but I did. I'm glad I did, but I didn't choose it. And so with the tarantula, the only thing I could do was slowly walk out of my room. I didn't make a sound. I was frozen in fear. And I went and got a chemist named Julia who had lived there long Longer than I had. I told her what the fuck was going on and <laughs> she came and helped me and told me that I was a big baby and sweeped it out of my room. She just took a broom and sweeped it out. No issues. That's what you're dealing with there. You know, there was another night because while I was there, I broke my finger. That's a story for another day. I broke my finger. I was given a ton of pain medication and I took so much that I started to get what felt like an ulcer. And so if you've never had an ulcer or something like it, or I guess whatever the fuck I had, I don't know what I had, but uh, whenever you get hungry, you get a really bad pain in your stomach. That's that's what I had. I don't know what I had, but whenever I was hungry, I had a pain in my stomach. So whenever I got even slightly hungry, I had to eat something. So that meant like, I was waking up like every two hours to eat something. And so one time I had this big loaf of bread and I woke up at like probably midnight and I was eating the big loaf of bread. I went back to bed, not realizing that I didn't close the loaf of bread into a bag. And I woke up with ants all over me covering my entire body. But that was not as traumatizing as the tarantula under my bed. And so with that, I will take out the scorpion. I'm sweating. They ask you how you are and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not. <sighs> it's in a container, not a bag. <sighs> Why did I do this? Why did I do this? <laughs> I'll show you what we're working with, okay? All right. God damn it! <sighs> okay, at least it's crispy, you know? At least it's crispy. So, I don't know, I don't, uh, I don't wanna, no! <laughs> it's on the floor, okay. That's fine, that's fine, it's on the floor, it's fine. Oh my God, it's fine. Everything's fine. It's just a little, it's just a little guy. It's just a little guy. I can eat it because it's just a little guy. I was not planning on pick. Uh, I wanted to just take a section of it. Uh, uh. You see it? Okay. All right. It just keeps breaking apart. Okay. Just do it. Fuck. God damn it. It's definitely crunchy. It's definitely crunchy. It's just a crunchy little guy. It's just a chip. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. Is this even safe? Is this safe? I didn't even... I didn't even look into it. I didn't even look into it. I don't even know if this is safe. There were plenty of reviews. There were plenty of reviews and that's why I bought it because there were at least 60 reviews on people who ate the scorpion. There were at least 60. Just a little bite. I don't think I can do this one. It's definitely a different, I got I got a couple pieces of it. And you know what, now that it's all mangled up, I think I can do it. I can do it now because it's all mangled up. It's not even recognizable. So I'll just do this little piece. I just spit it out because I felt how pointy it was. I didn't like how pointy it was in my mouth. So maybe I'll get a, a piece that's not pointy. That's fine. Very crunchy. Same thing. It's the same thing. It's it's all the same, except this one just feels like territory that I shouldn't have crossed. You know, the other two, it was like, okay, this is an interesting experience. This one, this one feels like I shouldn't have done that. Um, <clears throat> but I did it. Oh, I did it. Okay, and that's that. I got through all the tears. And in the next one or two weeks, the snake evolution video will be ready. The reason why it's taking so long is because there's a lot of shit about genetics, which we know I don't fuck with. So it's taking me a lot of time to make sure that I get everything right, that I understand it completely, because it's like I have to take genetics all over again. So expect the snake evolution video in one to two weeks, probably around the time of my birthday, which is March 22nd. And so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that coming up. And you can keep up with my daily short form content on TikTok and Instagram. I'm also setting up Patreon tiers right now, so be on the lookout if you're interested in being part of the Patreon community. I will be publishing that very soon. And for now, stay curious. The world has a lot for us to learn. See ya!